Hey there, it's Megan, the good business witch herself. I am so excited to have you joining me yet again for another episode of this amazing podcast. I just love coming to you and talking in your ear holes every week. And I'm excited to chat about SEO this week. And I know SEO is like one of those acronyms. I get it. But it is your best friend when it comes to organic marketing and organic discovery. So I love this. Before we get started, I want to remind you that uh, the Lunar Business Lab is now on Substack. You can join my Substack for free. And I will have it in the show notes. And, um, you know, if you go on Substack, you can just search for Megan Winkler or you can search for Lunar Business Lab and I'm there. So you can absolutely join for free. However, if you join as a paid member, there are a couple of different subscription options there for you. And starting in September, you will receive downloadable guides um, for the astrology for the, the month specifically how it works in your business um community i'm gonna have a separate podcast there i also recently just created the maybon guide and i'm putting the finishing touches on that it's going to have um all the things that you would want for Maybon, including like an incense recipe and a tarot spread and i'm also going to have some reflection questions that are geared more towards your business. But if you just wanted to use that guide for life, it's going to be there too. So I'm super excited about it. It feels really good. It feels like, I don't know, really manageable on my end. Um, and the reason I say that, and I know I said that last time on the podcast talking about its manageability, is that we have to be realistic about what we can do as individual business owners, right? And even if you have a team working for you, or if you have contractors or employees or whatever, um, you, a lot of the work falls on your shoulders, right? And so you have to make sure it's like, am I doing this with my best interest at heart? Because yes, of course, we all have to make money. We also have to make sure we don't burn ourselves out, right? which is the inadvertent best segue into today's topic, which is SEO. And the reason for that is that SEO is one of those things that like once you really get it going, it just works for you. It is absolutely beautiful. I literally have people just finding my website when they Google search for business, which I pop up because I'm all over the place, right? But I've also made sure that my SEO is on point. Now I hired an SEO um, writer and expert for my website. And so I wrote all the content that's on my website and I continue to write it all. Uh, but she really helped me identify specific keywords, um, identify topics for each of my pages, like gave me a lot of advice in terms of like what to do in my navigation and, and all that. So I did have help. Again, I am a huge advocate for getting help in your business where you need it. However, you don't necessarily need to hire anybody to do SEO. You can do it on your own. So coffee sip. My first cup of coffee for the day. I have started to make sure I eat before I start my coffee. The stress level has gone down in my life. I highly recommend this because I did not realize, but if you just kind of start drinking coffee on an empty stomach, it raises your cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone. Duh. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense, right? You're getting hyped up on caffeine. So if you eat a little bit, it helps your body process it more. So you get like all the benefits of coffee without the drawback. So anyway, enough about coffee. <laughs> Let's talk SEO. SEO is short for search engine optimization. And basically, that's just a fancy term for making sure you're increasing your visibility of your website. Um, and also, interestingly, now, like things like, obviously, like podcast, um, but like Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. So these social media platforms now are indexed, which we'll get to in a minute, are indexed by the search engines. So it's all about making your 
platform, and I'm going to say website because it's generally your website that we're looking at SEO, um, but it could be those other platforms, but your, your website more attractive to search engines. Um, so they're going to rank it higher in the searches. Okay. So in some of these, some of these topics might be a little bit of a review and I'm going to post a whole big blog series on it, um, uh, on my website, just so you can kind of go through everything and, um, almost treat it like a checklist if you want to. So, Search engines work by using three main steps. So one of them is crawling. And so what happens is basically like Google and Yahoo and I guess Bing as well um, and DuckDuckGo, all these search engines, they use bots and they call them spiders or crawlers, little creeper crawler bots. They explore the internet and they kind of like follow and crawl all over your website. So they follow links, they collect data, all that. I actually had something crawling my website one day and I had like, I don't even know, like 4,000 views on my site. And I'm like, I never have 4,000 views on my site. Like what's up? And it was likely that I, it was getting crawled by bots, which is cool. Like that's what they're supposed to do. So search engines will crawl the site. They will also index the site because once they've collected data, they are going to store this information in an index, basically a massive database, right? And so the index is what search engines use to retrieve the relevant content. So you've put your stuff up there. Let's say you are a massage therapist and you've put that up on the internet. So the bots have crawled it and they're like, oh, okay, well, this person's a massage therapist and they do these techniques and they work in this area and all that. And so we're going to index it. This is why, especially if you provide um, a physical service or physical products, like something where someone has to come to you to check out your stuff, to make sure you have location um, SEO, location keywords and data in your website and in your posts, because the little creepy crawlies will be indexing that. So that way then I could come in and let's say, Let's say you are a massage therapist who also does acupressure and you work in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Well, let's say I'm going to Santa Fe and I want to get um, a massage and maybe I do want to do acupressure, right? Let's just say these things. I'm like, oh, massage with acupressure. Santa Fe, I'm going to be on vacation. So I put that in and Google goes, hey, we know one. Here's one of the websites. So it's going to pull that in thanks to that index, right? Just like an index in a book. And then ranking comes in when users are searching, like I was just talking about in the previous example, and they're finding really relevant pages. So the pages are ranked based on a lot of different factors, including how relevant the keywords are, um, what the user experience is and what the quality of the content is. So this is why you always want to be like writing your own content, use chat GPT to help you write it, but like you need to be writing your own content uh, for the best results. And this way, like the search engines want to keep the user happy, right? Because then the user stays on there longer, buys things, they get ad revenue, the whole thing, right? So the search engines are going to rank the sites by the best matches. Does that make sense? <laughs> Again, if you have questions, I'm going to have a whole series of blogs on my posts or on my website talking about SEO, kind of like what it is, what all these things are. So you can go through and grab those as references and really dig in more. So there's a few different kinds of SEO as well. So you've got on page, off page and technical. Um, and really it's like the things that are, um, on your page are a lot of things we've been talking about, like keywords, meta tags, making sure your content's relevant. Off-page SEO is where we get to link building. So like if you are on a podcast episode and they link to your website, that's an off-page SEO. So if you were to be on my web, or on my um, podcast, 
I would, you know, have all your information. It's like, oh, Jane Doe and janedoe.com. And then that link is off page SEO. And then technical SEO is stuff that really like, that's more of like a web designer's role. And so that's going to be like site speed, uh, make sure it's mobile friendly, which you can do very easily. I know for sure in Squarespace, that's what I use. Um, and making sure your website's secure. So basically it's like the overall health of your website. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about keywords. All right, and I wanna share with you a couple of tools that I really, really love using. So keywords are probably the most important part of SEO for beginners. And the reason I say that is that you want to be using these keywords in all of your content. So you want to be using them on social media. You want to be using them on your website. Um, if you are publishing like a Substack or um, a newsletter via like ConvertKit on the Creators Network, you want to make sure you're using those keywords as well. So you can use Google Keyword Planner which is a free tool from Google. But what I love to use, quite honestly, is SEMrush. And this is my favorite tool. It's S-E-M-R-U-S-H. So this is a tool that I think you can use it for free, like three or four keywords a day. But really, like if you had just three keywords a day, that gives you a lot of content. Or, you know, it's one of those things that like... I think there's a free, um, free trial. So you can check it out and do what you need to do during that free trial period and decide if you need to keep the, the paid version, right? Anyway, SimRush is amazing because it will give you insight in, in the paid version. It will give you insight into your competitors keywords as well and kind of help you find the gaps in the searches, like what people are searching for versus what you have or what your competitors have. And like, there's some opportunities in there, right? Because it's like, if you've got a keyword that you know your audience uses a lot, but you're not seeing a whole lot of that like being used by other people, you have the opportunity to use that. So when you have these keywords, and these are words or phrases. So we have keywords, which will be individual words or long form keywords, which will be like a phrase, like let's say Pinterest in marketing or Pinterest marketing ideas. So if we have like Pinterest marketing ideas, um, then that's a long form keyword. And like, that is something pe people are searching for, right? So you want to integrate that into your content as it's relevant. If you are looking for Pinterest um, help and ideas, I do want to point you in the direction of Natalie Bardo. I have taken her Pinterest course and I'm going to have a link in the show notes. It is an affiliate link. It does not change anything for you, but I do earn a commission off of it. Just FYI. Anyway, what is so great is she actually outlines how Pinterest SEO is different than Google SEO. So it's really important to do some searching there. But one of the great ways that you can do kind of keyword research as well, if you don't want to use one of these platforms, is start typing your keyword into Google and like see what else pops up as a suggestion. Same thing in Pinterest. You can go in there and if you're just like um, home decor ideas is your keyword and you just kind of put that in there and it's like you'll find keywords on either side of that long form like aesthetic home decor ideas or home decor ideas for busy moms or you know whatever it is and take note of those things and then what you can do is you can write blogs on those so uh, if you've been here for a while if you've been here from the beginning i love you thank you so much please message me tell me who you are i have an idea of who some of you are but you know it's always fun if you have not and if you've missed my reduce reuse uh, recycle your content episode it was one of the very early ones go back and listen to it but the gist of that is is that you want to reduce your stress by reusing your content and recycling your message okay so if you go through and you search for a keyword, you're going to use that, that keyword and related keywords to write a blog or a newsletter. 
from there, there you're going to take that content and you're going to turn them into social media posts. Now, this is one way that I really like using AI as like a little assistant. I like to think of AI as assistant intelligence. It's kind of like having a VA. So I like to take my blogs and put them into one of my AI platforms and tell it, hey, you know, please use this content to create five social media posts or three Instagram posts or two LinkedIn posts or whatever it is. And it will take your words and it'll put it into kind of a social media format for you. You can zhuzh it up a little bit. You can edit it a little bit so that it still sounds like you and then use that. If you're posting a blog, that better be your newsletter as well. <laughs> Make, you know, use part of it in your, in your podcast too. I mean, use your content in all different ways. You should never be making like a brand new piece of content like every single day unless of course you are a content creator and that is how you make your living in which case you do you boo so real quick a couple of places you want to make sure to have your keywords in your website is you obviously want to have it in your content so that's the written content that people are reading um don't overuse it though. That's called keyword stuffing and it can negatively impact your ranking because it's not a quality experience for the reader. Remember when these uh, search engines go through and do a ranking, they're actually also looking at how good it is for the reader, right? Um, and then you want to make sure that your titles of your blogs and your headers, also like the titles of your website pages and the headers within, reflect some of these keywords. And then make sure your meta descriptions are also um, using these keywords. So it just kind of depends on what platform you're on. You want to make sure things like the alt text on your pictures on your website have these keywords in them because Google is ranking and searching the, the images. You want to make sure that you're using these keywords in any of like the SEO backend stuff. Like if you have Yoast SEO, if you're on WordPress, or if you go into the SEO panel on uh, Squarespace, you know, making sure you have these words in there, it's going to really help boost your searchability. Now, what the beautiful thing about SEO is, is once you have like the big chunk of it done, it's done, <laughs> which is so great. And it takes a few months. It takes on average about six months, especially if you don't have a lot of content out there yet for all of the SEO to actually start doing its job. But once it does, it is just amazing 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 so i hope this has helped kind of clear up some of like the terms for seo and kind of how it works and um gives you some ideas about how you might be able to create content and then recycle it and reuse it on different platforms and in different ways if you have any questions please reach out. My email is hello at meganwinkler.com. You can find me at meganwinkler.com as always. And even here on social media, wherever you're watching or listening from, feel free to comment and let me know if you have questions, comments, um, suggestions for the so show in terms of topics or ideas. And um, yeah, that's it. I hope to see you over on Substack at the Lunar Business Lab. And I will see you online as well on Instagram at the T-H-E Good Business Switch. And until next time, my friends, stay magical.